This video demonstrates repair of a 3 cm mid renal artery aneurysm in a 70 year old gentleman who presented with abdominal pain. CTA performed revealed a 3 cm aneurysm bilobed in structure arising from the mid renal artery. We decided to repair this aneurysm endovascularly. Under ultrasound guidance, right common femoral artery was accessed with a mini stick needle followed by the wire and introduction of a C2 catheter. This was followed by cannulation of the renal artery and performing a renal artery angiogram. A rotational angiogram was then performed. This was done to better delineate the anatomy of this renal artery aneurysm and also to help us perform the endovascular repair of this aneurysm. Shown here is the 3D reconstruction made possible secondary to a rotational angiogram. This 3D reconstructed image shows inflow to the aneurysm via mid renal artery and two outflow branches. Highlighted in blue is the branch that supplies the lower third of the kidney and highlighted in yellow is the outflow branch that further divides into two branches and supplying the upper two thirds of the kidney. We decided to place a covered stent extending from the mid renal artery into the outflow branch supplying the upper two thirds of the kidney and to perform coil embolization of the lower renal pole branch to avoid endoleak after successful aneurysmal exclusion. Next a steerable sheath is introduced in the aorta over a stiff angle glide wire followed by cannulation of the renal artery and performing an angiogram via this sheath. A wire is then advanced into the aneurysm sac. This is followed by advancement of a glide catheter and performing a renal artery angiogram. Outflow renal pole branch is identified. This is followed by introduction of a microcatheter through this glide catheter. A O18 wire is then advanced into this branch followed by advancement of the microcatheter. An angiogram is then performed confirming the presence of microcatheter in this branch. This is followed by introduction of a 5 by 15 cm detachable coil in this lowest renal pole branch to perform coil embolization and prevent endo leak after successful repair of the renal artery aneurysm. Once coil embolization is performed, we then turn our attention to place a covered stand to exclude the aneurysm sac. A catheter is then introduced in the aneurysm sac and an angiogram is then performed. This better delineates anatomy. Shown here are the marks that have been obtained secondary to dynamic CTA performed earlier. The orange mark demonstrates outflow through the aneurysm sac and the red mark demonstrates where this outflow branch divides into two and supply the upper two thirds of the kidney. The green mark demonstrates the lowest renal pole branch that has been coil embolized and the purple mark demonstrates the main inflow vessel into the aneurysm sac. A guide wire is then introduced in one of the branches supplying the upper two thirds of the kidney. Once the wire is advanced, a quick cross catheter is advanced over this wire and this wire would be exchanged for a rosin wire. Next an angiogram is then performed. We then measured the diameter and length of the stent to be used. This is followed by introduction of a 6 by 29 millimeter VVX stent that extended from the mid renal artery into the outflow branch. This stent is then deployed under fluoroscopic guidance. We decided to extend this stent proximally to allow for better seal. Another stent measuring 7 by 19 millimeter in size is then brought in place and overlapped with the previously placed stent. This stent is then deployed. Once this stent is deployed, we proceed with our completion angiogram that demonstrates successful exclusion of the renal artery aneurysm and no evidence of endoleak. This concludes our demonstration of endovascular repair of renal artery aneurysm.